Hello everybody and welcome! Today we're going to do something, well, I might say useful actually for a change. What you're seeing here on approach is a newly constructed rocket vehicle that is designed to put 1148 tons, maximum, into orbit and still is able to recover both of its stages. So yeah, we're doing the Falcon 9 approach here, but only with some significantly higher payload. Okay, this is, as I mentioned before, a two-stage rocket. The first stage uh, has about 3000 and something meters per second of delta V. So this gets us fairly high up into the upper atmosphere. And then the second stage only has about 440 meters per second of delta V to propel into a stable orbit. Once that is done, the payload is released and the stage can go back down to the surface. Of course, you have to do your ascent a bit more effective than I did in the past sometimes. And I'm pretty sure one of you is more capable than me to get this rocket into a very safe trajectory up into orbit. Anyhow, this here is called the Kerbon Heavy and it is about 98 meters tall and weighs 7,919 tons. That is the launcher alone. Add to that the payload and you're at more than 9,000. Yes, it's over 9,000! Yay! <laughs> All right. We're already in the upper parts of the atmosphere, so now we're probably going to see some plasma burning effects soon. There we go, it's heating up nicely up there. Hmm, I should have brought something to cook with me. Well, once we've reached the limit of the booster, the first booster, we're going to ignite the second stage. As I mentioned before, both stages are fully recoverable, except maybe for, well, a little thing on the second stage, mainly the fairings and some aerodynamic protection added on there, which is not really significant in regards to cost, because those tail pieces really don't cost a lot if you're playing career, which I rarely do. All right, we're now really picking up speed and I'm trying to fly as flat as possible. Why is that? Well, getting into space is easy, staying in space is hard. Because what you're going to have to do is not only get out of the atmosphere, but increase your lateral velocity such that you are in a stable orbit around the planet you're on. And here we have our stage separation. As I mentioned before, those tail pieces come off. They're just there for aerodynamic purposes and also some decoration. And now we're soldiering on with our second stage into almost orbit. Okay, we already have an um, apoapse of 7,000, 70,000. And after that circularization, we are now going down to the surface. As you can see here, I'm really reducing my velocity so I don't land in that mountains. This is going to heat up and I'm going to have to use my engines early on to reduce velocity. So this is looking good, but I'm getting whoops, out of fuel really soon. Maybe too soon? Okay, no cheats activated by the way, thanks for those sturdy vector engines! Okay, second stage recovered. Let's see how we do about the first stage. And this is a lot trickier, because bringing more fuel along to uh, perform that re-entry burn and the landing burn is not as easy as with the second stage. With the second stage I only needed an one additional S3 14400 tank, those 82 ton tanks. With the second stage I included six full 82 ton tanks in order to have, hopefully, enough fuel to get this thing down to the surface. 
as you can see here, we have now oriented ourselves into a retrograde orbit. Well, not orbit, retrograde trajectory, of course. And after this nice little camera angle, we are having the problem of overheating. Well, the main purpose of recovering stages is to keep the to keep the expensive engines and well that's not good if they explode on re-entry due to overheating so yeah that just happened oh well we have about a hundred more of them we can spare one anyhow i'm here trying to reduce my velocity so i don't burn up engines don't burn up I also included some parachutes so that I might mitigate the landing and also keep that thing more stable on the descent. Unfortunately, you really have to reduce your velocity to do that and it might already be too late. Also, my fuel might already be leaked. So we got those parachutes here, they don't help a lot. Little and yeah. Well, you know what's coming. Again! Okay, I tried another approach with maybe a bit better efficiency, but still this did not work out as I intended. Again! Okay, and this was some really random accident on launch. I have no idea what happened there, but... At least, bearing stayed intact. Again. All right. Next try. We just lost the decoupler because I engaged the engines of the second stage too early. And as you can see here, I, s I brought a lot more tanks than uh, before. And maybe this would have worked, but for some reason this was not so nice to do. Alright, trajectory is not showing me where I'm going to land. Probably. I would really like to land this not on water because it's easier to keep it alive on land, as bizarre as that may sound, but for some reason landing on water destroys rockets way easier than on land. Alright. We're still going to land in the water, maybe if I really get slowed down well, but not this time. Again. Yeah, I didn't even bother to include the explosion. So, this here was a completely new attempt. What I did was redesign the, bo redesign the booster once again. Well, maybe just a little, it was not that big of an overhaul, but I removed the additional mammoth engines and tanks I added in the previous version. And I added something else that you're going to see right about now. First we have to take care of the second stage and get this into a stable trajectory. Once this thing has about 75,000 uh, meters of altitude, it's relatively safe to land the booster and then get back to the second stage later, because it takes a few minutes until it reaches that apoapse. So, as you can see here, I've included some heat shields. Those not only protect my engines, they also slow me down significantly better than just the booster by itself. In order for this to work, of course, I had to toggle the outer engines to turn off, so I would not burn those heat shields away. And so far this is looking okay, I don't have to do that much of a re-entry or slowdown burn or whatever you want to call it, that burn that prevents the engine from being burned. Alright. This is probably going to land on water again, but those heat shields are very well in regards to swimmability. Is that a word? I don't think so. I just made up a word. Swimmability. Alright. There we go. We're going to land on land, actually. This is nice. And we're slow enough for the parachutes to engage earlier this time. Way earlier. And well, that velocity is quite manageable, even with only 
half our engines. Yes, this is looking good. I think we're going to have a success here and... Yes, we have landed our booster and if you're as excited as me, press that like button. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.